Welcome to part 8 of the beginner's revit course. We'll be adding in some finishing touches such as railings, columns and gutters. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources as well as 4 hours of ad free content, you can feel free to head over to my website and check out the course. I'll see you there. So next up, what I want to do is, this looks a bit weird at the moment, I'm going to add in the carport and I'm going to add in some columns around here. Now we can see that that carport extends out from the balcony. In fact, I think it's sitting underneath the balcony. And from what I remember, that was the case. This was a steel, corrugated steel roof um, on top of this these timber beams that run across it. Then there's a few columns on the other side as well, or posts holding it up. There's a post there holding up the floor above. So we can go ahead and start modeling some of that stuff in. I'm also looking at it. It looks like this pavement here should be extending out to the front porch. So I'm going to make that adjustment as well. We're going to go to the ground floor plan and we're just going to extend this out to be in line with that slab. Tick that off. Let's have a look at this in 3D. That looks much better. Now considering this roof is sitting just below the level two floor plan, I'm going to use the level two floor plan to draw up this carport. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, because this carport isn't showing on the reference image here, we're going to change the range base layer to show the ground floor. And there we can see the carport slab that we've created. Now we're going to create a roof that sits above this, but slightly below this level. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to roof by footprint. We're going to just create a rectangle. This is definitely not going to be 400 mils. We're going to use the generic 125. In fact, there might be a steel deck. That could be the one we're looking for. Maybe not. We can change that later. And let's just go over the top of the carport, but it doesn't quite cover it all. It's going to go out to where the balcony is. And then we're going to extend it out to where the balcony ends, which is right here. Have a look at what this looks like at the moment. We're going to have a gabled roof. We don't want any of these to define the slopes. We'll tick them off. So we've drawn that over the balcony, which is not what we wanted. So I'm going to edit that and align this to the edge of the balcony. Let's have a look at what this looks like. And you can see that it's a bit too high up in the images. It should be just below the balcony or maybe in line with it. So now what I want to do is align this the bottom of this slab to the bottom of this slab. I'm going to click on the bottom of that, click on the bottom of that. There we go. I'm going to use the align tool again to align to that. Tick that one off. Now I'm going to assume there's some posts holding it up on this side as well. So let's do some posts. There's also a post sitting here holding up the floor above. Let's go to the ground floor plan. I'm going to go to architecture and you've got columns here. We can have either structural columns or architectural columns. The columns we're using are going to be architectural. And what I want is a round column and it doesn't look like there's any loaded in. So we're going to load in some columns. If we go to the Australia folder, otherwise you should have some anywhere else. Go to columns. We're going to have a look at some of these. Do we have any round columns? Yes, we do. Load that one in. This is a 152 mil diameter. That could be about the same as that. There's only one way to find out. We're going to add it in. We want to try and line it up nicely with that wall as well as that wall there. And we've just placed it in, but we haven't checked where we're placing it. At the moment, it's only going up to the ground bathroom, which is 400 mils above the ground floor. We want this to be attached to level two, which is that floor above. And that should be 28 mils high. Let's have a look at if that worked. Beauty. But it's going all the way up. So we want to make it not go through this slab, which is... 320 mils thick. So we're going to offset this 320 mils. Oops, from the top offset. Negative 320. There we go. And I remember there were some real shitty rotting timber or wooden posts that were holding up the carport as well. I'm going to use the same one, but I'm going to make it thinner in diameter. I'd say they're probably around 120. So I'm going to edit this, I'm going to duplicate it, and just call it 120 millimeter round. We're going to change the diameter to 120, click OK. We're going to go to ground and we're going to create a new architectural column that is at 120 millimeters. I'm going to place this in line with that one. And so now our columns in there, I'm going to actually go to the 3D view 
and I'm just going to attach the top and base to that level above. And we can copy this one over in our ground floor view. And so I remember there being maybe three or four columns or posts running through here. And that is where you can use the array tool. I'm gonna to select this column, I'm gonna click on the array tool, which is this little four squared button up the top here in the modify tab. Before we select the column to array, we're gonna set it up. We wanna move it to the last column and we're gonna want maybe four columns between here. So now we can select it and the end of the carport here. And there you go, there's four equally spaced columns. If we changed our mind and we only wanted f uh, three of them, we can change that. Otherwise we can still change this. If we change our mind again to five, now you've got five columns and it's parametric, but we're gonna keep it as four. They are still grouped up so you can always change that even after you select off of it. Let's have a look at this in 3D view. I think that looks pretty good. We've got the carport there. We've got a post there. Now we need some posts holding up this roof above because I don't think that would cantilever off like that, although it might. And there might just be a balustrade that runs around it. So let's have a look at that. As you can see, that is a downpipe coming down there. I don't think there's a column attached to it. And there's no, there's definitely no columns around here but there's definitely a balustrade that runs around, a rail. Okay, so you can see that there's a column holding up this post bit here. If I wanted to model that in, it would be quite simple. I can just go to the level two and I'm guessing it's this part that hangs over. We can create a wall. Make sure you save your project. I'm gonna make this something generic, maybe like the 200 mil wall. And we're just going to draw, making sure we're connected to the right finished face. We're gonna draw around this part here. And now we can offset this to be a lot higher. So this door, I'm guessing it sits above that door. As you can see there, it's roughly maybe four or five, 600 millimeters above the doors. So what we wanna do is select both of these walls now. We're gonna attach the top and base to the roof above. Now that that's done, we just need to bring up the base so that it's not covering up everything. So we're going to select both of these walls. Now we're going to have a base offset of 2,500. And there we go. That is that bit modeled in. They could probably be a bit higher. Let's make this 2,800. I like that number better anyways. Alrighty. So then from that, there's a column that stems down. Let's go to our level two floor plan. And that column is going to sit about here in between those two walls that we've just made. So go to architecture, column, architectural. We're gonna use a, another 152 mil column and just gonna place that in the middle of those two. Again, that's probably not going up to the right level. Let's have a look at this in a 3D view. Definitely not. We can adjust this height to the top level, which will be up to level two roof. That will do the trick. The other thing there is when I'm looking at this image You've got the rail obviously, which we'll come back to, but you've got this storage bit here, which was holding all the, the pool toys that we used. And again, this storage bit isn't shown in the plans, but you can see that it sits pretty much aligned with the staircase. So I'm gonna to go to the ground floor. We're going to model it in below the stairs. So we're just gonna do a generic wall again. And this one's gonna be a lot thinner. This can be 100 mils. We're going to the exterior. And we're just gonna model this in like that. Obviously it hasn't been to the right height again. What we're going to have to do is edit this profile. We select both of these. We're gonna bring them all the way up to this level. We wanna bring it up to the extent of what we wanna have the walls at. So that means the top level is going to be level two. So what we can do is just adjust the top offset of this to be negative 320 or negative 300. So then it sits just below that um, that floor slab and obviously that's not quite big enough so let's go to negative 200 there we go that's perfect it's not showing up there it's not showing up underneath that is fine this one's the problem how do we get that profile and as you can see it sits directly below this support what we have to do is go up to top here and click edit profile now what we're doing technically is just going to adjust this and snap it to that I'm going to delete that line we're gonna just draw out the shape of this. I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna bring this one in, and then I'm going to draw 
that line in from there to there. And now we've just created the profile of this wall. Once you click the green tick, you're now gonna have that wall bit cut out. And so there we go. Now we wanna change these walls to look something similar to this. If you've got access to the files on the website, you can go ahead and do that. Or you can have a look for a lattice pattern yourself and then create this wall type as well. So what I've had to do is use a model pattern. The next thing I wanna add in is the fence or the balustrade or the railing, whatever you wanna call it, that goes around the balcony and the stairs. So let's have a look at the image. There is a railing that goes up the stairs and follows around. Actually, it goes to a gate here. And then there's a different type of railing that goes around the balcony. This is pretty simple to do. We'll go to the level two floor plan. And we're going to select this just so we can see where the balcony is. I'm gonna to go to architecture. And this is under railing, under circulation. What we can do is sketch a path. All I'm going to do is we can use the 1100 mil railing, that's default, because that looks like it's about 1100 millimeters high. We're going to edit the type and we're just going to see how this rail is structured. If we look at the baluster placement, so there's 25 millimeter square balusters. There's two balusters per tread, even though these aren't on stairs. And we can see that they are every 275 millimeters from the previous baluster. Let's have a look at what this looks like. We'll click OK on there. We're going to sketch this in. If we go around the balcony, up to that point there, then to here. So we've just created a continuous line around the balcony. Click that green tick. Let's have a look at what this looks like. Pretty damn good. The balusters could be slightly more together. I'm not going to be too fussed about that, to be honest. I think that's pretty damn good, just to automatically generate a railing. Next thing we want to do is then put the railing on this stair and it's just on the one side of the stairs. So if we go to the level two floor plan again, we click on the stair here. Now this time, instead of using the drop down menu to sketch a path, I'm going to use place on stair or ramp. And we can go on the stringer, not the treads, because we want it to be on top of the stringer. As we can see in the images, it's coming up from the stringer. And then what you can do is just select the stair that you wanna add the railing to. You click on it and it creates railings on both sides. However, we only need it on the one side, so we're gonna delete that railing. What you'll notice is that these railings do not line up, and that's because we need to line them up manually. At the moment, this railing is slightly overhanging from the slab, so let's get that sorted. If we go to the level two floor plan, what we can do is align this to that railing. So what I'm gonna do is just move this railing to be in line with that railing. What I'm now gonna do is edit the path. We're gonna just drag this one up to snap onto there, and then this one can get pulled back just a tad. We're gonna accept that. Now this one is perfectly lined up with the other railing. And these ones, they shouldn't overhang. That one might overhang just a tad. So we can edit that path again and just bring that in a little bit. And we're gonna make these exactly the same distance off. That looks pretty good. There we go. So there we have it. That's the balcony pretty much all done. The stairs have railings on it now. And I think this side looks pretty good. Next thing we wanna do is then put the railing on this stair. And it's just on the one side of the stairs. So if we go to the level two floor plan again, we click on the stair here. Now this time, instead of using the drop down menu to sketch a path, I'm going to use place on stair or ramp. And we can go on the stringer, not the treads, because we want it to be on top of the stringer. As we can see in the images, it's coming up from the stringer. And then what you can do is just select the stair that you wanna add the railing to. You click on it and it creates railings on both sides. However, we only need it on the one side. So we're gonna delete that railing. What you'll notice is that these railings do not line up. And that's because we need to line them up manually. At the moment, this railing is slightly overhanging from the slab. So let's get that sorted. If we go to the level two floor plan, what we can do is align this to that railing. So what I'm gonna do is just move this railing to be in line with that railing. What I'm now gonna do is edit the path. We're gonna just drag this one up to snap onto there. And then this one can get pulled back just a tad. We're gonna accept that. Now this one is perfectly lined up with the other railing. And these ones, they shouldn't overhang. That one might overhang just a tad. So we can edit that path again and just bring that in a little bit. And we're gonna make these exactly the same distance off. That looks pretty good. 
There we go. So there we have it. That's the balcony pretty much all done. The stairs have railings on it now. And I think this side looks pretty good. While we're on the topic of stairs, we need to fix up the stairs on the inside. So the best way to do that, let's have a look at it in the ground floor plan. I don't think there's any point modeling in the basement that is underground. Um, there is a secret door here, but we're just gonna keep that hidden for now. Looking at this image, we're gonna need that railing that goes all the way through the middle and it has a railing that goes up like that. I'm gonna go to the 3D view and this is where the section box is gonna be really helpful. And let's bring this through so that we can see the stairs. We can see that there's meant to be a kind of wall that goes all the way up and then there's a railing that sits on top of that wall and goes around here. We can't actually see it on the ground floor, but I'm going to assume this goes down to the ground. So let's go to the ground floor plan and let's model that in. I'm gonna just click on this stringer to give us a reference and the wall's gonna come up just behind that stringer. Create a new wall. In my eyes, this looks like it's only probably 20 millimeters thick. So let's use a 20 mil thick timber. We're gonna call this actually maybe 40 millimeters timber stair support. Let's change the structure. We're gonna make this 40 mils, and we're gonna edit this to be a timber. Click OK, click OK. Now let's create a new wall going from the edge of the stringer up like this. This is gonna be starting from the ground floor, going up to, let's try level two. It's probably going to be less than that though. So you can see that this is actually a part of the stringer. There's the stringer there, there's the stringer there. This is coming up from that. And I think what I'm gonna do here is remove the stringers and just have this wall act as the stringer. So if we click on the stairs and edit the type, I'm gonna duplicate this in case we've used it anywhere else and say no left stringer. So then we're gonna look for the left stringer support. And we're going to make this none. And you'll see that it will disappear. We can then change this to be that same type, which is no left stringer. And this wall is going to, if we go back to our ground floor view, this is now going to be in line with that. So if we select that wall, we can align it just like that. I'm gonna actually extend this out to this wall. So we're gonna go back to the ground floor. This wall is going to come back a bit. This can come in line with there. And likewise, that can line up there. We'll have a look in the 3D view. That looks a bit better. Now it's just a matter of finding the right profile for this stringer. You can see that it's slightly higher than the stairs, probably 600 millimeters above, and then the actual railing is another 200 to 400 above. So that means that this wall here, it's gonna have a top offset from level two, 600, because then we can carve out the right size of the stringer for this. And that means we're also gonna need a wall that runs along here, which is the same thickness as this. So if we go to level two and we draw in a new wall, we can make it with the 40 mil timber stair. And this is gonna go up to unconnected. We're just gonna make this go up 600. If we draw this in, we can just throw it off to the wall there. I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker. This should actually be 50 mils. That's what the previous stringer was. So let's change this to 50, click okay. That should be fine. There we go. We're gonna extend this out again. There we go. That just needs it up a bit. Okay, so again, we're gonna to have to edit the profile of this. And so we're gonna bring this down to the bottom riser. So from the bottom riser, we're gonna create a line that is 600 millimeters tall. And that's gonna to connect to this other point, which is also 600 millimeters tall. This should give us the profile we need. Let's accept that. And so now all we need to do is add the railing on top of that. And that's a little bit more difficult, but it's still pretty easy to do. Let's go ahead and draw that in and I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna to go to the level one floor plan, just so we can see that this in floor plan mode. We're gonna hit railing, sketch a path. We're gonna draw a straight line going from one end to the other and then around again to this point. And we wanna pick a new host for it. In fact, let's pick that as a host and let's click the green tick and see what it looks like. Okay, that's not bad, but it's also way too tall. Let's edit this. We're gonna duplicate it. 
and we're going to call this 400 millimeter. Now we can change the height of the top rail here and we're going to make this 400. Click OK. That made it a little bit smaller and you can see we're going to have to bring down this point a little bit to match up with that wall there. Or inversely what we can do is bring this up to then connect to that point. So then all we need to do is just attach this. We can align it using the bottom of the railings. I'm just hit tab to then select over that point and then we can connect that to there. This isn't the exact railing. This railing should curve around as well going down through there. But because I don't actually know how this works, it's going to be a bit difficult to do that. And so I'm going to leave that for this, for this part. If you wanted to do that, you could play around with having this curve around. But for the sake of not actually knowing how that works, it's going to be a bit difficult. But you've already been shown all of the things you can do with rails, how you can place them on hosts, how you can create them to follow stairs, how you can just align them along a, a slab. You've been shown all of the applications for a, uh, for a rail, so go ahead and have fun with it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off this section box. And really, we're on the stage where we're doing some final touches and we're starting to present the model. Another final touch we can do is, as you can see, there are gutters on these roofs up here. There's the downpipe that comes from that gutter up there. And on the other side, there is also a gutter. How do we put gutters in in Revit? Very simply, we go to the roof. The same as we had before, but we use the drop down menu now to go roof gutter. From here, literally all you need to do is select the point of the roof that you want a gutter to come from and you click on it. There you have a gutter at the bottom of that roof. Does that look right? No, not really. I'm going to undo that. The gutter usually sits on a fascia and what a fascia is, is just the backboard for the gutter to sit on. So if we go to roof, fascia we can put a fascia on to this side of the roof and as you can see that's just put a little lip on it which then allows you to go back to architecture roof gutter allows you to hang off a gutter there you have it then you can go around for the rest of these put on a fascia so if we go to architecture roof fascia click on there and then also on these sides as well there would be a fascia there. Now all we need to do is add another gutter to them. Roof, gutter, and you want to click on the bottom points of these where the fascia is. There you go, now you know where the water goes. One thing I'd like to touch on is that at the moment it's just floating in space. What we can do is add a topography to it. In the next lesson, we'll be presenting our model by creating and cleaning up the drawings as well as being introduced to rendering in Revit. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to head over to my website and check out the course. I'll see you there.